Hey everyone, it's Brant Frost. I hope y'all are doing well. It's been a while since we talked last, and in that time, in the last two weeks, a lot of things have happened. Since then, we've had an election, and we're still counting votes in Arizona, and some in Nevada, and a lot in California. And while we don't know the outcome of every race yet, it does appear that the Democrats will still hold a majority in the Senate, and the House is, could go either way, but the Republicans will probably hold a very small majority of uh, two to four seats. But I know that that was not the result that we were expecting, that I was expecting, and that most of us were expecting. Uh, the Democrats were surprised too. But I will say this, that this is just halftime, and we've still got a second half to go. This literally is the midterms. We've got two more years before we fight one of the most important elections in American history in 2024. So this is not the time to lose heart or get discouraged. And I'm so thankful that all of y'all I've spoken to since the election are not tired or discouraged. You know we have a great fight in December that we must win on November 6th, December 6th rather. And I know that some of y'all um, may be thinking that, well, if the Democrats control the Senate anyway, what difference does this make? Well, it makes a big difference, and I'll tell you why. As we all know, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema often vote with us to stop the most crazy and radical ideas of the left in the Senate. But if the Democrats control a 51-seat majority, which they will have if Warnock is reelected on December 6th, then at that point, we will have to persuade both Sinema and Man Joe Manchin to vote with us to stop their crazy ideas. On the other hand, if we can win this race, the Senate will stay 50-50, and Joe Manchin can still help us keep the most lunatic ideas of the left from becoming a reality. So it's very, very important. Also, we need to take comfort in the fact, and confidence, not just comfort, but encouragement from the fact that when Americans uh, voted nationwide in the popular vote for the U.S. House of Representatives, when you look at the cumulative vote for all the candidates running for House, the Republicans won that vote, and will probably win it by about three to four million votes. So there is still a lot of Americans, a lot of Americans who agree with us. And we also see the red states growing stronger. In states, for example, um, you have Alabama, where the Democrat Party is almost extinct at the statewide level. You see states like Tennessee and states like Oklahoma, where the Democrats thought they were gonna win, they lost by over 10 points. There's a lot of states which are getting stronger and stronger, more red, and unfortunately the blue states are getting bluer and bluer. And of course, the great results in Florida are such an encouragement to all of us. The great results here in Georgia. I mean, we would have liked to have won the Senate, won the Senate race without a runoff or coming first in the first round, but let us not forget that we want a clean victory in every constitutional officer, and that was not a foregone conclusion. We want a clean majority, almost eight points in the governor's race, a solid win in the lieutenant governor's race, and we won by six points or more in all the other offices. And we should be very thankful for that, that we still have a Republican legislature, a Republican governor, Republican constitutional officers. And from the point of view of the Democrats, they're pretty much back to square one. After four years of president of the universe, Stacey Abrams, um, they're still no stronger in terms of state level politics. They don't control either house of the legislature and they don't have a constitutional officer who they can then run for governor. So we should be very thankful uh, for the great result and for all the great work that was done by folks like you, who made the difference in so many key races where the margins were close here in Georgia. And I wanna thank you so much for that. You know, we had a great result in our state overall, and with the one exception of not winning the Senate race without a one runoff, we should be very grateful for that. Also, I'd like to um, encourage y'all with, no matter what's happening around the country, and there were some close races, some heartbreaking losses in various states, but remember this, Biden may be in the White House, but Jesus is still on the throne. There's a great old hymn that really expresses how many of us should be feeling today and hopefully are as we've come from church. That old great hymn, Because He Lives. Be because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. All fear is gone because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because He lives. Remember that, folks. We may be worried about the future, but we don't have to be because we know that God rules in the affairs of men and nations. And when a sparrow cannot fall without his notice, a great nation cannot rise or fall without his aid and guidance. And we are so thankful that it's not just our effort. We would be lost if it was all on us. So let's remember as we go forward that it's in his hands and he's got this. And on December 6, let's work toward a great victory, Lord willing, and work like it all depends on us and pray like it all depends on him. We'll talk to you soon, folks. God bless you.